For the first time, Time Magazine, in partnership with Nickelodeon, which is a division of Viacom CBS, is recognizing its first Kid of the Year in the U.S. 15-year-old Gitan Dooley Rao stood out among more than 5,000 nominees. She's a scientist and an inventor who is using technology to tackle issues ranging from contaminated water to cyberbullying. Gitan Dooley is with us now to talk about her new title and her work. So, you know, first off, congratulations. and. What does this recognition mean to you? Yeah, thank you for having me. And I think that this is, it's so honoring and humbling to be among so many fantastic people who have appeared on the cover of the Time Magazine. But along with that, just to be among the fantastic Kid of the Year finalists as well. So I am so humbled and so grateful for this opportunity. So, Gitanjali, in your interview with Time Magazine, you said you, quote, don't look like your typical scientist. Uh, explain to our viewers what that means, and more importantly, what does representation mean to you? Yeah, so there's this thing that I've always seen, like your typical scientist is not me. I'm fairly younger. I um, am a female of color, and that's not necessarily what you see in every scientist out there. So I was kind of facing backlash towards myself of, can I really do this? Is this, can females be scientists? Can girls of color be scientists? And here I am today um, as Time's Kid of the Year. So I am truly excited that we're really defining the representation in STEM and innovation. It's so interesting that you said you sort of like question yourself, uh, probably because you haven't seen other people like you as frequently. And as I was sort of reading about your story, I kept on thinking how it feels like you're part of a wave of really accomplished young girls and women. And I'm thinking of like Greta Thunberg and Malala Yousafzai, like young girls who have created movements that have become worldwide movements. And I thought, you know, maybe this this is really what go, girl power is. It's not something you scribble in sparkly pink marker anymore. People are actually taking young girls seriously. I'm wondering just, do you feel like you're part of even a larger trend? Yeah, and I'm so honored to be almost named alongside Greta and Mawala, who are two so inspiring females in every field, activism, um, girls' education, climate change, and I'm, and it's so beyond humbling to be among them. Um, but I think more than anything, there shouldn't be one of me. There shouldn't be one Gitanjali. There should be other students just like me who are looking to innovate and create change, and they just don't know where to start. And that's exactly what I'm doing through my yeah. workshops, is inspiring other students, families, and educators around the world to be innovators and really putting out the message that innovation doesn't have an age. Being an innovator is something that anyone can do. Gitanjali, what was the, take us back to the moment when you realized that science was something that you really enjoyed working on. In other words, um, there's got to be, I guess because you're a scientist, there's got to be that eureka moment that this is what I want to do with my life. Take me back there. Yeah, and I always struggle with this question because there was never really one Eureka moment. It was kind of like a set of Eureka moments that led to my love of science and technology. Um, the biggest thing was I always wanted to put a smile on someone's face. And I started doing that using science and using technology and seeing how I could use science and tech to put a smile on someone's face. And one of the changing moments in my life is actually when my uncle got me a chemistry kit when I was about four years old. And I finished the whole thing in one day just because I was so excited. And I used my uh, expertise in science and technology to solve real world problems. And I use science and technology as a catalyst for social change. Um, so I'm a parent. So, of course, I want to find out what your parents did to ignite this passion in you. <laughs> uh, and so it, my, my, my question is sort of like a two-part one. I'm wondering how your parents helped you get to this point, but also your educators. Because, you know, this is kind of a weird time in education. There's a lot of virtual learning. Educators are having to experiment with different ways of teaching students. So I'm wondering how the adults in your life, educators and your parents, help to kind of like keep this passion going? Yeah, and I have one solidified answer for your two-part question here, actually. And I think that 
just having a support system that believes in you is something that hits different in all accounts and any scenario is if you have that one person, if you have that group of people that believe in you and are willing to support you in your endeavors and your journey, your life changes forever because you know there's someone to back you up. And I can tell you it's personally life changing. For example, my parents and my teachers have always been such huge support systems, including the mentors that I've worked with in all sorts of labs across the nation, quite literally. And just being there for students when they need it is um, just so exciting for the student themselves because they know that someone's in it to win it with them. And you caught the attention of our CBS News correspondent, uh, Adriana Diaz, three years ago after you won a national science competition. Um, but maybe our viewers don't know that part of the reason that you came up with the idea for one of your inventions is you saw what had happened um, in Flint, Michigan, with the water crisis there, which led to uh, where lead seeped into the water supply there, and a lot of people got sick. Um, what did you think about that? And what did you tell us about the invention that you came up with to try and alleviate a problem like that? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. So I created a device called Tethys, which helps to detect lead in drinking water faster and more inexpensive than the current tools out there today. And yes, I did the 100% of the inspiration was actually off of the Flint water crisis, learning about how many students my age were being affected by something like the Flint water crisis, because they were essentially drinking a poison every day that caused lifelong damage to themselves and all of this just because they were drinking water, which is supposed to be a basic human right that everyone should have. So I was just appalled at the statistics, appalled at what was happening and realized that if no one else was going to solve this, I was going to. Um, what I find interesting about you as well is that you're just into pro solving problems through science, science period. Some people are really into chemistry or really into computer science, but you just like science on a whole. And you've dabbled in a bunch of different things. I know that you're looking into cyberbullying and how to detect cyberbullying on, on the internet early. Um, what else are you working on? Yeah, so you could it almost like swings across the spectrum every time i do something new because i'm quite literally a kid who's doing something she loves and doing something i love is just learning and learning about new scientific concepts so what better way to continue learning than applying it into daily life and currently i'm actually going back to water but instead working on biological contaminants so parasitic contaminants which is so exciting knowing that i worked with metallic ions and compounds in the past but now i'm working with things that are actually living. And um, yeah, I'll make sure to stay tuned with my journey to learn more about how I'm doing that. Yeah. Uh, as I furiously mm -hmm. Google metallic ions. Uh, <laughs> 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 Gatanjali Rao, thank you so much. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for having me. You can watch Gatanjali and Time's other finalists on Nickelodeon's Kid of the Year TV special tonight. It will be hosted by Trevor Noah and features celebrity guest stars who will help surprise the finalists, and celebrate their work. You can watch that tonight on Nickelodeon at 7.30 p.m. Eastern.